Today on the newscast is a European Union nation about to move its embassy to Jerusalem. Plus, an Israeli expert joins us to share three reasons why there is no Palestinian state. That's coming up. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. One of the highlights of my time hosting the Watchman show was the chance to attend the grand opening of the U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem back in May 2018. It's hard to believe it's already been five years, but what a day that was, folks, to see the United States acknowledge Jerusalem as the one and only capital of the nation of Israel. Now, a few countries followed suit. We've had Guatemala, Honduras, and Kosovo also move their embassies to Jerusalem. We'd like to see this be a wave of nations, especially nations that claim to be aligned with Israel. That includes many Western nations. That includes nations, of course, in the European Union who still maintain their embassies in Tel Aviv rather than the ancient and ancestral capital of Israel and the Jewish people. Well, there are signs that may be about to change. Hungary, according to the Times of Israel today, may be considering moving its embassy to Jerusalem. Now, of course, Hungary is a European Union nation under the leadership of Viktor Orban. It has a very close relationship with Israel, and Orban and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu have very warm relations. Hungary has been seen, really, as the EU's biggest backer of the Jewish state. So this doesn't really come as a surprise. Again, the Times of Israel reported this, they said after intensive discussions between Israel's foreign ministry and Hungarian officials that this thing is a done deal and the embassy is moving, the Hungarian embassy, to Jerusalem next month. But let's put the brakes on a little bit, folks, because Hungarian officials responded to this report a little while ago today and said, look, we haven't come to a final decision yet. And there was no comment from Israel's foreign ministry about this. Now, we hope that Hungary does make the move and move its embassy to Israel's capital, Jerusalem, Israel's one and only capital. We shall see. But, hey, the United States under then-President Trump certainly got things rolling. Uh, a lot of people thought that would never happen. Not only that the United States would move its embassy to Jerusalem, but that any country would move its embassy to Jerusalem. And one of the things that struck me at the time when Trump announced the move was the, the various analysts, so-called, and commentators saying that it would set the Middle East on fire, it would spark even a regional war. Well, that didn't happen. The embassy moved and things have been all systems go for nearly five years now. So we are watching the Hungary situation very closely. If we get confirmation on that, we will bring it to you. In the meantime, one of the reasons, or the main reason, that Europe, European nations say they won't move their embassy to Jerusalem is because of the lack of a peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. In other words, the absence of a Palestinian state. Now, I sat down recently in Jerusalem with Professor Ephraim Inbar of the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, and he laid out three reasons he believes there is no Palestinian state and there won't be one, at least in the near future. Take a look. Recently wrote a powerful piece about the two-state solution, which, which many in the West are still talking about. And you wrote, basically right now, that's just not realistic. There, there's so many other things going on. There's not credible Palestinian leadership. Could you elaborate on that a bit? Because again, we have to talk of this once again in Washington, D.C. with the Biden administration and European capitals. They won't let go of this dream, but right now it does not seem very realistic to say the least policies should be based on realistic assumptions. And unfortunately, uh, we are not going to see uh, this paradigm uh, being implemented anytime soon for three main reasons. First of all, the distance between the Palestinian positions and the Israeli positions are too far to be bridged. On issues like Jerusalem, on issues like refugees, uh, on issues like borders, the distance between our position is simply too far. And all attempts by American administration, Amer Americans made a huge effort over the last 25 years, yeah. maybe even more, to bring the sides together and it failed. Yeah. 
so this is one reason. The second reason, which is usually not mentioned, is that the Palestinians are not able to establish a state. A state, a modern state, uh, has monopoly over use of force. Mm -hmm. There is only one central authority that can uh, rule over a military force. Unfortunately, in the Palestinian territories, there are militias. One militia took over, Hamas took over part of the Palestinian territory. Even in there, there are clans and there are Islamic yes. Jihad. So even there, there is no monopoly of force. And recently, we've seen a demonstration of the lack of ability of the Palestinian Authority to establish control over parts of the territory, in, in Nablus, in Jenin. Uh, and this is the reason why we have to go in and take care of the terrorists. There's ongoing violence there in Nablus and Janine, yeah. and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, that Iran-backed group, has a strong presence there. Yes, and also Hamas. If there will yeah. be elections, uh, they might take over. This is one reason why Abbas preferred not to have elections. That's He's right. in no hurry to have elections. Yeah. And the third reason, uh, usually conflicts end when at least one of the parties is tired of the conflict. Yeah. And in this case, neither part is tired enough yeah. to say, okay, enough is enough. Yeah. And uh, the Palestinians still have uh, energies. Hamas is an ideological religious movement that uh, defies logic mm -hmm. and continues to fight Israel. Similarly, Israelis have energy to continue to fight we for things that are important to us. Yeah. We have no problem recruiting young guys into the paratroopers to continue my job in the past. That's right, former paratrooper, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we still have energies. And in Israel, for example, there is always an exit option. People can always, you know, sell their apartment, yeah. take their uh, technological know-how and move anywhere in the world. Yeah. They don't. Ma Israeli mothers send their children to the military, knowing well that sure. there is a possibility that their sons might be killed. Yeah. This takes a lot of determination. So the Israeli society is still very resilient yeah. and continues to fight for things that they think it's cardinal for their security and destiny. Great analysis there from Professor Ephraim Inbar. Folks, if you like that clip and you want to see more like it, be sure to tune in to our weekly Watchmen television show on TBN. It's the world's largest Christian television network. You can catch it every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time and Fridays, that's today, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on TBN. We're on the ground in Israel, bringing you the kind of content, commentary, and analysis that you just won't see anywhere else. So be sure to tune in to the Watchmen TV show. You can also catch it at tbn.org on demand. You can stream it there at the TBN website. We've got a lot of great content coming to you on the TV show very soon. And of course, right here on our YouTube channel. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.